afternoon. Thanks for coming out this afternoon. I appreciate you being here. Uh, somebody asked me earlier today, you know, how, how are things going? I said, well, I've had better days. But, um, but I do appreciate uh, you coming out to uh, get some information. I want to make it real clear that I'm going to leave some time at the end for questions and answers. So if you have any questions whatsoever, anything that you want to know about what's going on, I'd sure like to hear about it because if you have questions, there are other students that would have similar questions. And I certainly understand that there are questions that we need to <coughs> respond to. As I hope most of you know now by reading the um, information on the website, also looking at the St. Augustine record, that uh, our former uh, Vice President for Enrollment Management uh, for the last four years has been exaggerating, inflating uh, SAT and ACT scores for the purpose of improving our profile. Uh, the profile which is used by uh, the U.S. News and World Report and other magazines that uh, rate colleges. Uh, I regret that this has happened. I'm sorry that it happened. I'm sorry that a senior member of our administration has decided to uh, do something like this uh, and to use uh, very poor judgment in altering the test scores, the uh, grade point averages, and the class ranks of our entering freshman students. Uh, we discovered this, uh, I was informed of this on Monday, February 10th, as I was preparing to go to Tallahassee for a meeting with the Independent College and University Presidents uh, in Tallahassee on the following day. Uh, when I learned of the information, I asked our uh, Vice President for Academic Affairs and our Director of Institutional Research to go to our um, IT staff, Joe Provenza, and to see if there was any possibility that we would be able to identify when the changes were made and, more importantly, who made the changes. I received this information uh, when I returned on Wednesday, and Friday afternoon I had a meeting with our former VP, confronted him with the information that was presented to me, and he took sole responsibility for the actions of altering the test scores. So I, I, that's the quick and dirty of it. Um, what is going to happen going forward? I think that's probably the most important thing. We are, we are a, an institution of higher education. Uh, we pursue truth, honesty, uh, and we want to be above board in anything that we do. Any of our public utterances and anything that we do uh, with our college family, we want to make sure that we communicate as clearly and as accurately as we can. We have uh, engaged a gentleman by the name of Talbot Sandy D'Alembert, who is the uh, special counsel. We hired him as the special counsel to conduct the investigation for misreporting the profile information on our freshman students. Now, Sandy D'Alembert is uh, a former president of Florida State University. He served as president from 1993 to 2003. Uh, he, is also, he also served as the dean of the law school at Florida State University, and he was a former president of the American Bar Association. So he is a man of considerable influence and, I would say, an impeccable reputation. We have also hired a law firm in Jacksonville, McGuire Woods, to conduct the investigation, to look into this matter and to look at it thoroughly and to report fully any of the information, any of the findings and recommendations that might come out of this investigation. A full disclosure of that report. We will hide nothing in the report. If it's embarrassing, it's embarrassing. 
So we will make sure that everybody gets a full report. But I just, I want to uh, leave you with a couple of thoughts. One is that we are a well-respected institution of higher education. And the action of one individual should not in any way uh, blemish the fine reputation that we have built over the years. Today I met with three uh, anchors, television reporters, all focusing on this one sad matter. But to, to put it in perspective, uh, we won our third national championship in Anactus this last April. We couldn't even get the story on the front page of the St. Augustine record until a week later. There was no television station that came down to interview Donna DiLorenzo or Barry Sand or members of the Enactus team. So there's something about uh, an event like this that seems to draw a greater interest than perhaps it should. But I, I, I want you to understand that the reputation of, of this institution, while it right now is a little shaky, uh, it is certainly no different than it was a week ago, a month ago, a year ago. We're still a very fine institution of higher education. But I would also acknowledge that there is no question that the current problem poses a public relations issue for us of no small magnitude. But I'm very confident that we're going to work our way through this thorny issue that we now face. It does not in any way blemish the history of this institution for the past 45 years uh, or the many accomplishments that we have made uh, during the time that I've been president of the institution starting in 2001. But more importantly, it does not compromise the mission and core values of our institution. And one of the core values is integrity. And I just want to underscore that. And I think it's, it's ex extremely important that you understand that. There have been several questions that I've seen that have been posted on Facebook and, and other social media. And I'm going to try to address a couple of these, and then I'm going to stop and open the floor for questions. And I hope you will ask questions, tough questions, any question that you would like to pose. One question was, were students admitted on the basis of fraudulent data? And the answer is unequivocally no. Uh, the changes that were made were made after students had already been admitted. In fact, they were made after students were placed in various courses based on test scores, based on high school grades. So the faculty advisor uh, who was working with students and placing students in classes was looking at the paper file of SAT scores, ACT scores, or high school grade point averages. So there was no possibility that they were looking at any of the data in our administrative computer system. There was a question posed to me last night by the St. Augustine reporter. You know, were, were there any financial incentives? You know, why, what was the motive for the VP to do what he did? And I assured her that there were no bonuses and no other incentives for him in doing what he did in terms of the, the data. The myth, the, there was a question about the misreporting of data and how that might affect current students or former students, especially those that perhaps uh, graduated already, uh, those that enrolled in the fall of 2010. This is high school information. Uh, this is information to get admission to college. Once you get into college and you're going to graduate school, you're going to law school, you're looking for a job, there isn't anybody that's interested in knowing what kind of an SAT score you have or what kind of an ACT score you have or what your class rank was in high school or what your high school GPA was. They want to know what did you do in college. What kind of score did you have on the GMAT? What kind of score did you make on the LSAT? 
So I don't think that there's any bearing whatsoever. I don't think there's any concern whatsoever for you in terms of looking ahead and pursuing whatever, your, whatever career path you want to pursue. If you decide to go on to graduate school, uh, you will still be accepted into any of the graduate schools provided that you have the necessary grades here at Flagler and the necessary test scores. It could be a GRE, it could be a GMAT, it could be an LSAT. So those are the uh, points that I wanted to make to you this afternoon. And I would like to now invite, and I'm, I hate to stand behind this, but I, I don't know that my voice will project loud enough. So if you will permit me, I'll just stand up here and uh, be close to the mic so everybody can hear. Any questions? If you have a question, just raise your hand, stand up, and be recognized. This lady back here. So the reputation at Flagler College has been compromised temporarily. How that, will that affect my degree in later years? Since I am applying to graduate school, the institution is now looking uh, less valuable. And I understand that the scores that were compromised were high school, but that still doesn't help me. Uh, very good question. That's a great question. Uh, and, and I can't say to you that it's, it's not going to have some current effect. But I have received uh, emails, I have received phone calls from college presidents, uh, including the University of Florida, uh, saying, you know, we're very sorry about this. Uh, you have a fine institution and continue to do what you're doing. Uh, graduate schools today are looking for students just like law schools are looking for students. And I frankly do not think that it will have a bearing at all because the grades that you've made here had nothing to do with the misreporting of data on, um, on, the, on the freshmen who entered. So I, I understand, but I, I hope that you will have confidence and faith in knowing that we have also built up a lot of goodwill with, with very, very fine graduate schools. And our faculty have, have established very firm and good relationships with graduate school deans, law school deans, in assisting students gaining admission to graduate school and law school. So thank you very much. Um, were there any checks and balances that could have prevented this from happening? So does anybody uh, check his work so that they go forward? Well, those of you in the back, uh, John was asking, were there any checks and balances in place to uh, keep this from happening? Uh, that, is, that is precisely why it happened. We didn't have any checks and balances. Uh, yesterday afternoon, I spoke with Dr. Bell Wheeling, who is the president of the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, the regional accrediting body for the southeastern or the southern states. I served as a member of the board of trustees of that body for six years. And um, our accreditation status is not at risk. There is no issue there whatsoever. But one of the thing that we have to do now uh, I have to write a letter to Dr. Whelan, uh, which I will do. I will reiterate to her uh, what happened, try to explain why it happened, but more importantly, what are we going to do moving forward to ensure that this does not happen again. This afternoon, I met with Joe Provenza, our Chief Information Officer, and also Dr. Will Miller, who is our Director of Institutional Research and Effectiveness. And we started mapping out a response to Dr. Wheeling. So we're going to make sure that the data are verified and verified and verified. So we're going to probably do an overkill for at least the first four or five years, but we're going to make sure that this type of thing does not occur again. Oh, that, that question has come up, and, and I know that the feelings run pretty hard and pretty deep, but um, if, if we terminated him or if we accepted his letter of res resignation, he is gone. And, uh, and that part of it, I, I realize that there are some faculty, there are probably some staff, and there may even be some students who would like for me to take him into the courtyard in Ponce de Leon Hall and have a public hanging. <laughs> um, 
and, and even that may not be uh, satisfaction enough. But I, I don't see, I honestly don't see the distinction in that. I, I don't think it's an issue. Uh, you've got to understand that he loved this institution and he worked very hard for the institution. He had a lapse in judgment. He made a mistake. Uh, it was obviously a, a major mistake, but I, I hope that uh, he will be able to move on and do something with his life. I don't know what he's going to do and, and how his family will get through this, but uh, that was my call, and I don't, I don't have any second thoughts about that. Um, my question is how you think this incident may affect our funding and, in turn, our tuition. I just lost the mic. <laughs> we got another microphone. Um, on Sis on sound, Charles checking on it. Let me move up here and can you hear me back there? Um, the, que the question was how will this affect our funding? Uh, our funding comes primarily from student tuition fees, room and board. So that is our major source of funding. Like a lot of small private colleges, we are very tuition dependent. As far as the state of Florida is concerned, with the Florida Resident Access Grant, uh, there is no issue there whatsoever. As far as federal financial aid is concerned, there is no issue whatsoever. Uh, the only question mark would be, are we going to lose any of our friends and our donors? Uh, based on the early emails that I have received, including an email from Tom Keenan with the William R. Keenan Jr. Charitable Trust, they are solidly behind us. They recognize that this was the action of a single person who did, who, who did a misdeed that certainly is going to affect us, but it in no way changes the character or the reputation of our institution long term. Yes? Um, you say that there is no uh, financial incentives as far as bonuses and um, from what you just said. But do you not think that the college should take this as a sign to look inward on itself as its own ambition? And, and not, I mean, you said that they're going to monitor that avenue heavily, but I mean, corruption could happen in any other field. I mean, it, is it in terms of growing? I mean, do you not think that we should be looking inward and see why it's happened? We, we constantly look internally at processes, at systems, uh, and we're constantly vigilant about that. But ultimately, you have to put your faith and trust. There's somebody at the end of the process who's going to be held accountable. And in this situation, the profile of the class never changed. So there wasn't any indication that somebody was in SAT scores or high school grade point averages or class ranks. So yes, we are we we are constantly looking at our internal operations, the business office, the financial aid office, and uh, certainly now the admissions office will take a different approach with that. Yes? Um, we all already may know this answer, but what legal actions are being taken against this man who's committed fraud and defaced this institution? Uh, you know, when, when, you, when you start talking about legal action based on fraud, um, I'm not sure exactly what legal action we could take. We're not the only college that this has happened to. Uh, we're, we're not going to recover any kind of financial damages whatsoever. Uh, are we interested in putting him in jail for this? I don't think so. Um, so at this point, I have a board of trustees meeting on Thursday. We'll discuss this with our board of trustees to see whether or not we will decide to pursue any kind of legal action. And I don't anticipate Quickly, that. while I'm standing, another yeah. question, though, if people will allow me. 
where can students find all the information that the team of lawyers that you have hired and the specialists you have coming in, where can we find that for you know all the utter transparency which you described a lot of us would probably like to see the same information and come to our own conclusions? Well, I think you'll have to understand that because of the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, uh, we're not going to allow uh, every student or any student or any faculty member for that matter to go in and have access to our files. This is an investigation that is being conducted by an attorney and by uh, a person of very, very high uh, reputation, in, uh, Sandy D'Alembert. So what I'm saying to you is that I trust that they're going to do a very thorough job and that they're going to report fully the findings and the recommendations. That will be posted on our website. You will be able to get not a redacted report, but the full report. So we're not going to extract or have an executive summary, you're going to see the full report. They are being paid by the school administration? Excuse me? They are being paid by the school administration? Yes, that is correct. Oh. Yeah. Chase Wilson, I, I, I don't have a question. I would like to thank you um, since the beginning um, in your knowledge of this situation, you know, coming um, to fruition. I would like to say that I feel like um, Flagler College is itself in you have been incredibly forthcoming and transparent about this, um, considering the nature of what's happening. Um, and I think, you know, me being a student, four, four awesome years spent at this college, um, I think so far you've taken the appropriate measures to ensure that the, this gets resolved in a timely fashion. So for that, thank you. Say, I, I received a, an email from a very good friend, uh, Lisa Melinda Picard. How many of you have ever heard of the great Melindas? Tightrope Ty walkers. Uh, Lisa was a student here in the 70s. She now works, she has a very nice job in Washington, D.C. She sent me a very, very, very nice email. And I, I will post this email. I'll have uh, our IT staff and web people post this on our web tomorrow because I think it's said in a very, very nice way that it is a sad situation. And the thing that Lisa pointed out was that it, it is something that is very difficult to explain because you're, you're, you're concerned. If I were a student, I would have concerns. You know, what are the consequences? How is this going to affect me? And she said, you know, that is probably one of the most difficult things about this. But I promise you that will be posted and you'll be able to see it and you'll be able to read it. I'll need to send it to Lisa to ask for, for her permission to post it. But I'm sure she will agree to do that. Yes? I wanted to know specifically how this is going to affect our tuition in the next coming years. Uh, we're, we're not anticipating. We, we are a very market sensitive institution. Uh, we're, we're not going to all of a sudden uh, inflate our cost as a result of some action that was taken. Uh, to the contrary, uh, we're going to try to hold our costs down. Our tuition cost right now is $16,000, a little bit under $16,200 a year. The average tuition for four year private institutions in the country is just a shade under 30000 So we are a very, very good value as far as institutions of higher education are concerned. We're going to continue to have that same kind of a pricing strategy. So I don't anticipate any major changes in our current trends of pricing. Other questions? Yes. In any higher social strategy the situation that's going on, how exactly do you feel that if the numbers were put in correctly, that would show that if students were actually struggling from year to year, about they can get help from the other 
disabilities office or and your professors as a whole where as everything made stable so nothing can happen. Do you feel like students were struggling as it was really shown or do you think that kind of a thing? As I, as I said in my sort of prepared remarks, when we were actually doing the advising for class schedules, the faculty advisors were not working from some printout. They were actually working with a high school transcript in their hand, paper uh, reports or SAT scores or ACT scores. Uh, all that kind of information was sitting right before them. They were looking at a transcript. They knew not just what your overall GPA was, they knew what your GPA was in English courses and what math courses you took in high school. So they were completely prepared to place you in appropriate classes. And they have that information. They don't send that back to the registrar. All the faculty advisors keep that information on their advisees. So they're not dealing with what was changed. You said there were no financial incentives for this man to do this. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to know what kind of incentives he, he would have. Like, why would he do this? What would his end result be? Do this if it was financial. I, I would say it, it, could boil, it could be boiled down to a matter of maybe personal and professional pride. Uh, he is responsible as the Vice President for Enrollment Management for ensuring that our institution meets certain goals, certain standards in bringing students to the college. Once he calculated the profile information, if the profile information wasn't up to the level that he was thinking that it was, at that point he made a decision, an ill-advised decision, to alter the data. So it wasn't based on, you know, if you bring in a certain number of students, you get this bonus. If, if the students, if the SAT scores are at this level, you get this. There's none of that. So there's no incentive other than his own personal pride and his own uh, professional aspirations. Yes, ma'am. What does this information mean for students in Flagler's education department, especially students who may have been falsely admitted into the department? That one, uh, I would have to say, uh, is one that we are in the process of looking at as we speak. Because uh, there is a minimum test score. And, and the, where I don't think that it would have been an issue for a student who was an education major at the time of admission. But if a student came here, just to be very forthright about it, if a student came here and uh, decided to change from social sciences to education and did not have the required test score, there may be an issue. But we are in the process of looking at that. And if there is an issue, then I personally will go to Tallahassee to meet with the Department of Education in Tallahassee and explain the situation. So uh, we would work very closely with students who might be affected. I don't think that's the case, but that's a possibility. Uh, the question was, how can we be certain that it was just one person? Uh, the, the reason we know this is, as I said during my prepared remarks, when uh, our, our Vice President for Academic Affairs and our Director of Institutional Research went over to meet with the IT staff, there is an audit trail. So you could see on this audit trail the date when the field was changed you could also see the name of the computer. So there's no question about it whatsoever. I'm 100% certain. Um, how did IT stumble upon this? Like how? IT did not stumble upon this. IT did not. Like, like how did that? Happen? I will tell you. I'm holding this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, way, the way it was found, a, a faculty member uh, was looking a faculty member was assigned the responsibility of, of setting up the uh, class schedule 
for composition classes for next fall, getting ready for the fall registration. And in looking at the placement of some students, he got a printout of test scores and grade point averages. And he looked at that and he thought, well, gee, that's, that's strange. Here's a student who certainly has SAT scores that are above the cutoff for this particular class. Then he noticed another student who was above that for that same class. So he had about four or five discrepancies that he was concerned about. So he went over to the registrar's office and said, you know, would it be possible for me to see the files of these students? And in all cases, it was, he could look at the paper file and he could see the test score. And he knew that the test score was lower than the test score in the administrative computer system. So that was what started the investigation. With that information on Monday, February 10th, we then launched our own internal investigation, and which culminated in uh, the VP resigning. I've got a hand up back here. So we've been focusing a lot on the negative aspects of how this is affecting Flagware. I want to know the good things that are going to come from this. What is the silver lining? The, the silver lining is, is what I said earlier. Uh, you can't have one apple spoiling the entire pair. Uh, just look at what we've accomplished and, and the things that we've done in the history of this institution. Uh, you, you really can't just dismiss all of that and say, well, you know, these students were probably admitted with fraudulent data, therefore they, they couldn't have performed as well as they performed. I would not tell our inactive students that. I would not tell our SAM students this. Uh, we're going to have a drama production here this, this weekend. And uh, I wouldn't tell our drama students that they can't perform very well. Or our students in deaf education who are attending one of, the, one of only 14 undergraduate institutions in the United States that's certified by the Council on the Education of the Deaf. So there is a silver lining. It's unfortunate. It's certainly a sad affair. But as president, I'm not going to dwell on the past. I'm going to try to move us forward and uh, make sure that we continue to have the kind of success and progress that we've enjoyed and over the last well and good, years. but is there growth that can come from this that you can see? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what you're asking me. Is there something, like John was talking earlier about checks and balances, is there something that the school can grow from from this? Like this is a terrible tragedy. But there must be something that the school can grow from. Well, we're, we're going to take a very hard look at the entire admissions process. We're not going to just look at changing or, val or validating test scores. So we're going to look at the entire process. I think that, that will be a very positive thing for us. Thank you very much. Yep. Way back there. Does the college have a plan in place to keep the student body informed about the progress of the investigation? Uh, we don't have a plan per se, but as, as you can see, as I was speaking to the faculty Monday afternoon at 3.30, we were posting sort of a holding statement on our website. This happened on Friday afternoon at 4 o'clock. So we began working Saturday morning on setting up some kind of a communications plan. And uh, we initiated that communications plan on Monday afternoon at 3.30 when we posted the statement on our web website. Uh, we, we're going to be very transparent about this. Uh, we know that there are questions. We know there are concerns. So uh, the last thing we want to do is keep things quiet. We're going to talk about it. We're going to uh, say whatever we can say. But I don't anticipate that McGuire Woods or Sandy D'Alembert are going to begin leaking information to us until they have completed their report. So we will pursue with that. But if we do have something in the way of uh, new policies and procedures regarding admissions 
and validating data that we put into our administrative computer system, we certainly will talk about that. Yes? Um, it sounded like the, there was a drop um, in admitted student scores from 2009 to 2010, which prompted him to do this. Uh, were the flag, were flagger standards lower in 2010? Why was there that lower scores to begin with? I think that's I think that's an excellent question, and uh, rather than me trying to speculate on that, we haven't verified that, we haven't looked at that. Um, admissions is uh, is one of those things where a, a student, because of yield rates, because of admissions rates, the profiles can vary from year to year. My guess would be exactly what you've said: is that the profile went down, and that's why the, uh, the um, test scores and the grade point averages were inflated. But we will verify that, and that will be part of the report. Yeah. Uh, with respect to the admissions office, the email that was sent back the other day at 3.30 was rather vague when you consider that this is a small school, and many, many students know the entire admissions office all. Why was the exact person who did this kept so secretive even after the email was sent out? At, at that point, uh, we were looking at a privacy issue. We were not trying to uh, have somebody crucified, so to speak. Uh, we could have put the name in there. That's, that's not a big deal. It's a good point. Yes? For students who are going to represent the school at national conferences and to speak as extensions of Flagler College, when people ask about this, what do we say? Just say what I said. Um, it's the action of one individual. It, it hasn't changed. If you're going to a national conference and you're competing, the fact that you're there speaks volumes about you and this institution. So. So I, thank you. So I would I would say to you that um, be proud of being a Flagler student, and and say yeah yeah we're we're, we're sorry that it happened, but the, the college has moved on and uh, we're still a great institution. We've done some pretty amazing things, and um, you know I, I don't think I would try to dwell on some explanation as. Uh, Lisa Walinda Picard said, it's, it's a very difficult thing to explain. This lady back up here had her hand up. Are you talking about just the admissions office? Yes, just the admissions office. Um, I think our admissions office is certainly going to take a hit, but I think most of you who know the folks who work in our admissions office know that they are very, very good and very decent individuals. And I, after talking with Mark Willier, when he took sole responsibility, he was very remorseful. He regretted it. Uh, he did not intend to have. Any, any of this happened to our college. But um, I asked him, I said, well, was anybody involved? He said, absolutely no. And then that was corroborated by our IT staff. So I'm completely convinced. This, this issue of test scores, grade point averages, and class ranks is going to be solved. Uh, we're going to have a plan to make sure that this never happens again. So if there's some other area in admissions that you have a concern about, uh, I would be very much interested in hearing about it. Yes? Why did we hire our own investigators instead of having the state step in? It's not a state matter. The state is not going to be interested in what Flagler College does or doesn't do. Uh, what we wanted to do was to bring in some people with some absolutely impeccable credentials. I think if you go online and look at a Sandy D. Allenberg 
and, and look at his record. I mean, there's, there's no question that this, this individual is extremely well qualified to serve as a special counsel for this particular investigation. And the McGuire Woods law firm is also uh, a very highly respected law firm. So we didn't go out and bring in somebody from another college or bring in somebody from the business world or bring in some other individuals in the local area. So we, uh, Sandy D'Albert is in Tallahassee. Uh, he's going to come over here and the uh, McGuire Woods law firm will also be here. Yes. Um, I was wondering why Mr. Willier isn't here to give us a public apology himself. Well, I, I would say that he, if, if given the opportunity, he would do that. Uh, I'm absolutely sure of that. Uh, that was not my purpose this afternoon. I wanted to speak to you as president of the college, and I wanted to give you some assurances about what the college has done and what the college is going to do. And um, I'm, I'm sure that Mr. Willier will probably write some letter uh, to the board of trustees or to the uh, student body in some fashion or form. Uh, he is very remorseful about this. Yes? Uh, you talked earlier about integrity of Flagler College, and as a student, I take that integrity very seriously with academic honesty. Is there going to be any sort of honor code put in place for our faculty and staff so that they can be held to those standards like we as students are? Uh, institutional integrity uh, covers everything. It's, it's not just a matter of the academic integrity. So truth and honesty are things that we pursue as an institution of higher education. Uh, they are core values for us. So we, we have looked at an honor code. We have looked at some other things. Uh, that is in the hands of the faculty right now. And, and they are trying to figure out how best to establish that. So um, uh, your point is well made. This lady right here. Well, because this incident obviously affects our national placement, do you see or project um, this issue having any impact on admissions in the future as far as who is at the admissions? That is a very good question. The question was uh, given the fact that our, our scores were misreported, uh, will this have an impact on our national rankings? And if so, will it have an impact on admissions? That is million dollar question. Uh, there's no question but what it will affect our national ranking. Uh, there's no question about that. But you should know this, that U.S. News and World Report, when they do the rankings, there's weighting of different parts of what they use to evaluate institutions. Test scores represent 7.5 percent of the total weight of the ranking very small compared to the other factors that are looked at by U.S. News and World Report. So while I, I think it will impact us, I don't think it's going to impact us significantly. Yes? On the flip side of that question, how do you think it will affect both future retention and current retention as parents look at this issue and say, do I want my child going to uh, another great question. I'm glad these questions are coming out because the question was, how is this going to affect retention? And that is a concern because now you, you have some concerns as a student at Flagler College. You know, am I going to a good school? Yes, you're going to a good school. Are you enjoying your classes? Are you enjoying your experience? And if the answer is yes, then that has not changed. The fact that test scores were changed has no bearing whatsoever on your experience or the quality of the education that you're receiving. So now it comes down to a matter of reputation. Is the institution's reputation solid? And the answer to that is maybe temporarily, but not eternally. This is not something that is, that is going to be permanent. There are a lot of good schools who have had cheating scandals, including West Point. Well, I won't mention any institutions. <laughs> but, um, but there are a lot of schools that have had cheating scandals. And you know, we, we've got to be very careful not to just dwell on the negatives and, and what, what uh, the downside is here. Uh, 
the positives, I think, far outweigh the negatives. And yes, I am concerned about retention. Yes, I am hopeful that students will put this behind them and say, gee whiz, you know, I really do enjoy my classes. I like my professors. Uh, I like the students that I go to school with. I love St. Augustine. This is a great place to go to school. And I think that that's uh, what we're all hoping for now. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I can't. I can't even begin to guess. You know how long this is going to last, or, or you know what the lasting effects will be. Uh, we're cert we certainly will learn something from this, and, and we'll put in place things that we need to put in place to make sure it doesn't happen again. But I can't. I can't stand here this afternoon and say, well, it's going to be six months or nine months, twelve months, a year and a half. I have no idea, but, but I do know that we have 14,000 alumni, and based on the emails that I've received from alumni from all over the United States, they are 100% behind the institution. They recognize what has happened, they're happy with uh, their educational experience at our school, so they are, are, they have moved on, and I hope that our students who are here will also move on. I've had my hand raised like 15 years. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> um, I wanted to know if my class was going to be the same as the one that I was in, and if so, how will I go to college compensate for that? Uh, you, your degree is not going to be devalued. <coughs> Think about it this way. There is nothing, as I said earlier, in your high school record, in your test scores, ACT scores, that has anything to do with your performance at Flagler College. So what you have done here, the grades that you have made, the skills that you have acquired, the abilities that you have acquired, are, are the things that are going to enable you to succeed in whatever career path you want to pursue. So whether you decide to go on to graduate school, whether you decide to pursue a career in some field or another, this is not going to be something where somebody's going to say, oh, wait a minute, you know, let me Google Flagler College and find out if this was the school that had the misreported SAT scores. That is not going to be an issue. I can assure you of that. So uh, I think you just have to have faith and trust that uh, the good that we have done and the reputation that we have built uh, will certainly far outshine and outlast anything that has to do with one bad experience. Yeah. Uh, the question is uh, for students who had their grade, who had their scores altered. Is there any way to find out about that? Um, yeah, there probably is. And, and if you are really interested in that information, then I would suggest you are allowed by the Family Rights and Privacy Act, you're allowed to have access to your file. So you can go to the registrar's office and you can say, I would like to see my file. And then you can ask the registrar, have the scores in the computer, are the scores in the computer system consistent with the scores that are in my file? Keep in mind, we're not going to touch the computer system while an investigation is going on. But after the investigation has been completed, we're going to go through and correct every mistake that was made in the computer system. Yes? Uh, the, if you heard the question, uh, were in terms of the grades change, were uh, were these directed toward any particular demographic groups? And the answer is, at this point, based on the information that was shown to me, the answer is no. Uh, it was seemed to be pretty indiscriminate in terms of what grades were changed and how they were changed. Um, 
Yes, yes, you will. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Um, there's an ongoing investigation beginning, I assume, may have already begun. Today. Today. Yes. yes. If, let's say, that investigation comes back and there's horrible co corruption and fraud amongst Flyler College, could we lose accreditation and our diplomas be worth nothing? Um, you know, I, I think that's, that's kind of a doomsday scenario. That's not going to happen. Is uh, it a possibility? Though? No, it's not a possibility. Not even, not even a remote possibility. No, there's, there's no, there's no uh, uh, corruption, there's no um, collusion, there's no scheme uh, as far as the admission staff is concerned. Uh, they are just as concerned about this as you are. Uh, they feel that their reputation as an office has been uh, harmed, and uh, they're going to do everything they can do to make sure that, you know, that, that they maintain a very good reputation for the institution. So that's, that's just not going to happen. Yeah. That's a great question. Um, from a standpoint of PR, or from a standpoint of communication, what are we doing now to provide a little more clarity about what happened? And uh, we're in the process right now of developing responses to questions that you all have asked here this evening, and to explain in greater detail uh, the information. But at the same time, if we haven't answered the question, to the extent that you want it answered, then you can get in touch with me, you can get in touch with Vice President Wolfolk or some of the other administrators here at the college. Yeah. In regards to the school's ranking, I've heard multiple sources that the most ranked next year, is that correct? I don't know. I, I spoke with uh, uh, Bob Morse, who is the editor of US News and World Report for the, the best colleges. I reported what had happened. And um, he said that U.S. News and World Report would not, would not make any decision about what it would do next year until it received our full report. So I can't even send him a partial report. He's not interested in a partial report. He wants a full report. So we'll just have to wait and see whatever it is that they'll do. Yes? Is there any indication for how long the investigation is going to last? I have not yet. Uh, received from McGuire Woods some preliminary estimate. They are a law firm, and they bill at about $400 an hour. So my hope is that this is not going to last very long. <laughs> so, um, so I think the sooner that it's done, the better, and we can get it behind us and then move on. Yes? Well, I would say I spent uh, 22 years of my life in, in the Office of Admissions for Mercer University and 18 here. And I think ultimately, as I said earlier, uh, you put a lot of faith and trust in people to do the right thing. And sometimes systems and processes go awry. Uh, there's, there's an awful lot that could happen in terms of reporting of information. And, you know, a lot of institutions also have issues related to the same reporting of data. Some institutions, for example, uh, if they have a certain number of admits that are admitted by exception, they can drop those students out of their profile. So, you know, I, I can't tell you exactly you know, what we could have done, should have done. Obviously, in retrospect, what we're going to do now is what we should have had in place. 
but having worked in the field of admissions for a long time, I can tell you that there are that the majority of the institutions in this country do not have checks and balances in place. They trust the Vice President for Enrollment Management to do the right thing and to report accurately the information that, that they have. It's almost six o'clock. I'll take one more question. If there is another question. Yes. I just have a statement. Yes. Um, I took this really hardly on myself when I heard about this and everything. But I think as a student body, as staff, as faculty, we learn from our, from our mistakes. We get through it. And how we, it's not what the public sees is what happened that was bad, but how we react to it and how we work as a team, work hard together, uh, prove our, that we're actually a very good institution and still love our school. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Again, thank you all for coming out this afternoon. I know you had some other things that you could do on this beautiful day, but um, I do appreciate hearing from you. If you do have any additional questions or concerns, uh, it's abear at flagler.edu, and I'll try to get to your emails as quickly as I can. Thank you.